Welcome back everyone. I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. We're going to go over Lesson 6.16 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer today. And the subjects for today's lesson are alpha halogenation and the haliform reaction. Two reactions that involve addition of species to the alpha position of a carbonyl. In our last lesson we talked about ways to alkylate this position and how it's able to be deprotonated by addition of a base. Here we're going to talk about, first of all, how to install a halogen at that position. And a way to conceptualize this reaction mechanism is to think about, like I talked about in the last lesson, the keto-enol tautomerization. Remember that you have a small amount, very small amount, of the enol form at any given time for a ketone or aldehyde in this process. And when we have that, and think about what type of reactivity we could have between this species and a halogen. Let's consider bromine. Now we know that an alkene will react with bromine like this. Now generally one of the steps is a lone pair from the bromine coming back down to make a bromonium intermediate. But we don't need a lone pair from the bromine. We have a lone pair on the same molecule from the O. If we do that step, what we have initially is we've made an OC double bond, but there's still a proton on that oxygen. And we have gotten rid of the alkene double bond here. We've made a bond to a bromine, and we have the Br minus. This would be this bromine that accepts electrons over here, right? So you can have the bromine assist taking the proton off of that oxygen, and the net result is that you have taken one of the three alpha hydrogens that was initially there, that's an alpha position, it used to be a CH3, and replaced one of those H's with a bromine. This is the alpha halogenation reaction. You'll notice that all we have to do is mix a ketone with a halogen. Usually this is going to be bromine or chlorine. Doing the reaction in that way, we don't need a base to help us take the H's off of the carbon at the alpha site. If we do add a base and a halogen, well, the base is going to help us remove more than just the one H from the alpha position. In fact, the product that we get when we do this reaction is actually a carboxylate. You'll notice that carbon is completely taken off of this ketone. How did that happen? We'll have to figure that out. And we have a CHX three molecule, where X is going to be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And these types of molecules, HCX3, where X is a halogen, are called haloforms. And the specific haloform name depends on which halogen we have. The most common or most familiar to most people might be chloroform, where it's HCCl3. So we have fluoroform, chloroform, bromoform, or iodoform. So we have this equation, and we see, if we try to balance this, we figure out where the x's have gone. We have the O that is going to end up being this O. We have basic conditions, so I've not shown this as a carboxylic acid. I've shown it as the carboxylate. You could add a second step where you could neutralize this. But let's take a look at the mechanism of this. Well, if we have a base, that's the most reactive reagent here. It's going to take one of the H's off of the alpha position. So I would initially expect to have the enolate. Well, if I have a minus charge on a carbon or an oxygen, depending on which of the resonance contributors we use, we could draw a step like this. Now, if we choose to draw our enolate in this resonance contributor, we could draw the reaction of the alkene with the bromine or the halogen. I'm going to continue the way I've drawn it down here. Either way, you'd get the species initially. Now, that is the first species we get. However, if we have base left, we will see that this alpha position actually features more acidic H's than we had at the start. At the start, you have this alpha position. Here we have a halogen allowing partial positive charge there that makes it even more attractive to be deprotonated by that base. So then we will have an enolate that looks like this, where we have 
one of the H's left now, minus charge, and we can react that again with the halogen. And again, we could choose to draw it out with this arrow pushing form as well. I'm just going to keep it simple for this demonstration. But you see we've added two X groups at this time. And if we do this where we deprotonate and take the third H off and add the X, we'll initially get a compound that looks like this, where we have CX3 attached. Now if we have the base, you have no more alpha H's to take off here. So what are we going to do? We do nucleophilic attack. Say, so, well, if we did that, we would have a species like this. And now, the strange thing that happens in this reaction is that the CX3 group, if we draw it out, let's consider chlorine, has a lot of positive charge in the carbon, so much that it's actually possible to push that carbon off as a leaving group. That is very unusual to have a carbon-based leaving group. It's only possible because it would be very stabilized by the inductive effect of those three chlorines pulling all on the same carbon. And of course, you're not going to leave the minus charge in the carbon. You're going to deprotonate it. And that will get us to the final products that we drew already on the previous page, but I'll show them here so we don't have to flip back. We have, in this case, chloroform plus the carboxylate. This is a very good industrial process for making chloroform. And the important distinction between these two reactions we talked about in this lesson are that for the haliform reaction, you have to recognize that when there's a base, you're capable of deprotonating and removing all three of these H's and replacing them with X's. If we don't add a base and we only add the halogen, that's when you stop after adding just one halogen to the alpha position. So you might draw out your final product like this.